Hello everybody and welcome to Wise Exotics. Today we'll be discussing Nepenthes from the island of Palawan. Now, I have Nepenthes Mira, Leonardo, Palawanensis, and Attenborough guy here for reference. So if you are looking at getting any of these species or need a reference for a younger or what you're more likely to get when you buy one of these, these are some examples. Now, there's another species called Deanna that is closely related to Mira that I do not have within my collection, so please keep that in mind. Now, Nepenthes Mira, as seen here, has a very squat body. Usually this will start yellow, then dark in here. And it has these kind of serrated nectar fangs, that's what I'm going to call them. Uh, similar to Bicolatera and Lingulata. The nectar drips down these fangs and it attracts the prey. Now, the uppers of Mira are very spiky. And have a lot of these prominent nectar fangs and a very yellow point there also have some flare points which is very similar to that of Deanna now Deanna is an interesting Nepenthes in that it's found at a lower elevation Nepenthes Mira is at, found at 1500 elevation um Deanna which is this is Deanna as you can see less prominent nectar fangs it does not have the coloration coming at the stem like Mira and its uppers are more flared more points and have stripes so it's a little darker to keep in comparison now my mirror is right here as you can clearly see this is the Borneo exotics 3979 i believe yeah 3979 uh there's also the aw clone that is available things to keep in mind when looking at mira very soft pliable leaves the tendrils will get the color of the pitcher when they're starting out they will start out brown as you can see here but as they age they will actually get more of a pinkish coloration pinkish burgundy similar to that of mirrors pitchers yellow parasome and then the parasome darkens as you saw even the basils of this um there you can see the back end here by my finger that's wiggling there is still a pinkish trait you can see the coloration of the pigment in the plant as it develops that pitcher which is interesting now, as we talked about this nectar fangs, they are a prominent trait in a lot of their hybrids with Mira. So you can see this one, this is Mira X VGI. Very pretty, I love its two-tone pink and yellow. Um, there is also over here a seed-grown specimen. This is Raja X Mira. Still has those nectar fangs at the top. Very interesting. The coloration, as you see in the tendril, is darker as opposed to Deanna. Now, we're gonna go down here. This is Independence Leonardo. This is a species that is only found at one mountain. It's called Mount Shumkat. <laughs> I cannot make up these names. S-H-U-M-K-A-T, Mount Shumkat. It's found along the slopes, and it's about a little lower than Mira, 1,300 meters or higher. Um, very interesting species. I've only recently got this. This is another one that is closely related to Deanna as well. It's also got... A little more narrow leaves. Now, Mira tends to live in mountainous, uh, kind of limestone-ish soil. Very rocky, uh, but they also have dense foliage around it, which is my theory why, or I should say hypothesis, why the leaves are so pleatable. These leaves have to push through other vegetation, and they bend and adjust so they don't get torn or damaged. So that's, I think, a reasonable explanation why the leaves are the way they are. Leonardo's leaves, and this one's very tiny, are actually a lot denser. So keep that in mind. Uh, they're ground, they're grown usually in terrestrial um, on the upper mountain forests and shrubs, is what it said online. Very interesting. I've only had this one a short amount of time. The pitchers are already acclimating. As you can see, it's already losing those pitchers due to stress. But it already popped a new one, and it's developing another one over here. So it's quite happy already in my setup. And it's got a growth tip. This is a seed-grown specimen. Uh, Leonardo is related to both Mira and Deanna, which is obvious. They're all from the same island. Now, in comparison to Mira, it doesn't have the flare points. A lot of striping, but look at these nectar fangs. These are extreme. Similar body to Mira. It's got the pink body with speckling, and then you got this kind of inner yellow with red. Now the upper pitcher, as an example, extreme serration. This looks more like Mira, but again, crazy amount of striping. This is very flamboyant in my opinion. Very gorgeous specimen. So 
keep that in mind. Now we're going to go over to Palomanensis. First off, if you're thinking about getting these, I would highly recommend reviewing um, Red Fern's videos on Palomanensis and Attenborough Just to keep in mind, they have a very good um, documentary on both species. But some points of note, I have two Palomanensis here. So these are both from BCP Best Carnivorous Plants, which is a Czech company to my understanding. In comparison here, you can see it right next to a Mira. Both, this is the mirror picture, and the one that it's bumping into is the palinensis picture. At this stage, they're very closely related, you can see. But one major difference is the leaf coloration. Now, Nepenthes usually, as you can see, have green leaves, but some have reddish leaves, and I always find those to be very interesting. So, as a larger specimen, which I believe palinensis gets much larger than Mira, and a lot darker, uh, both in pitcher and in leaf, obviously, you can get these reddish leaves. Now, my other palensis here does not actually have any active pictures right now, but it's developing one here. Usually this one has stripes, so unlike Mira so far that I can see, palensis and even Attenberga and Leonardoi can have stripes as well as Deanna, which is interesting that I haven't really seen a Mira with striping. They can have a color gradient, but not so much stripes. Anywho, palinensis uh, are comparable to that of Attenborough, I believe, in both size. Um, now, palinensis name suffix ensis means originating, so it's, it, it name literally means originating in Palawan, where Mira means wonderful. Um, it is only found, found at the summit of Sultan Peak. It is found at elevations of 1,100 and above. Uh, it is one of the largest known Nepenthes in the world, and it's very close related to Attenborough and I would say Deanna, uh, Leonardo, and Mira at this point, given their literal visible differences and or apparent similarities, even at this young age. They both have this colored tendril. They both get yellow peristones and whatnot. Now, the striping can occur at younger ages on Palonensis. Uh This one so far is a seagrown specimen. This one has not exhibited any stripes that I can see. Um, so even if it doesn't, that's okay with me. My other one does have stripes. So the striping usually is like one or two little neon red streaks. That's how you tell if it's striped so far that I can tell. Now, Palonensis uh, is a very apparent darker parasome. So you can even see some of the gradient striping coming here. Little flares, but it's a much darker. Their uppers are very interesting. Similar to that of Attenborough guy. So keep that in mind. Now we'll go check out Attenburgai. Now I only have one Attenburgai within my collection. Attenburgai is a lot greener. It's very similar to Leonardoi here, at least in the leafage. Uh, this is the Borneo Exotics uh, clone 3693. So keep that in mind. But just comparing them, a young Leonardo and a young Attenborough are very similar. There are differences though. As you can see with the tendril is green here. The tendril on Attenborough is already kind of a brown. The Nardois are green. So there are differences even at a younger state. Uh, the leafage on Attenborough is actually denser. So like I can slightly bend the Leonardo. I, I cannot actually bend this without probably damaging it. Um, I know Attenborough guy here is supposedly very sensitive. A lot of people warned me when I purchased this plant that I was probably not going to see any pictures on it for the first couple months because usually they go into shock. I was lucky that the person selling it is only like an hour away from me. It was from Plants That Eat. Uh, I purchased it. It came in. I stuck it in my open air setup and it threw a picture and then I put it in my uh, tank setup and it's been growing very fine since. Now, both Attenberg and Palinensis were both discovered by McPherson, I believe, and Alistair Robinson. Uh, here we go. An example of Attenberg Extremely large pitcher, but it's more bowl-shaped around the parasome. Very wide, very dense. Um, their upper pitchers are very different from that of Atten or from Palinensis. Where Palinensis is kind of like dark here and then green here, it's almost the inverted coloration from what I was showing earlier. So... Something to keep in mind. Um, is there anything really besides the sensitivity of Attenborough guy that comes to mind? Not really. So far growing this, 
all of these like cooler temperatures, they're all highlands. Um, nothing really comes to mind. It is found on Mount Sagpaw and the teeth, air quote, is what it says. They are found at ranges of 1,400 meters. So actually, Attenbergai and Mira are usually harder for people to grow because they're a more extreme highland variant. Mira being at 1,500 and Attenbergai being at 1,400. The others being at 1,200 and whatnot are usually a simpler thing. So Leonardo and Palomensis might be easier for some people to grow. Now, there is uh, hybrids of Palomensis just starting to come out. One is Palomensis X Raja, which I would love to have in my collection. But at this point, they're extremely pricey. They're usually around $600 to $900 range that I've seen. Just seen things way smaller than that, even smaller than my uh, basil over there. So keep that in mind if you're looking at that. If I had to say which of these to start growing or would be more interesting to grow, I would pick uh, Palomensis. Not only is it have the name of the island it's from which makes it easier to research the reddish leaves here i'll try to zoom in on those are very interesting now i do actually have a basil on my non-striped seed red one so i've got that available if anybody wants a rooted or unrooted cutting of that i'm more than happy to sell that off but at this time i've got my two palonensis which striped and non so far at this date state of my collection um both of these were from bcp no problems growing them in my collection as you can see on this one this one's a little greener but still has a reddish color this seed grow one has much redder leaves at least darker so it's either green dark green to red or reddish i kind of like the reddish leaf one better because it stands out to me among all the nepenthes here you're like Green, 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 darker green. Wow, that's kind of reddish. That's kind of where my eyes focus. It's kind of like looking over there and you see peltadas or anything with peltada hybridization. Uh, they can get the reddish leaf, which is, in my opinion, a really cool trait. Now, growing both Attenborougai and Pelonensis together, and you can verify how they're comparing them. They are similar and they are cousin species and close really, but... These have more spade shaped leaves. These have more narrow pointy leaves, kind of like um, Nepenthes diabolica or Lingulata. They have very long curved straight leaves where Mira, Diana, and Palonensis all have these spader, fatter, wider leaf coming out. They also make kind of a cool star pattern as they grow and develop. So I think that's an interesting trait. I guess Mira also seems to have a more narrow-ish leaf compared to that of Palonensis. Palonensis has got, like I said, this kind of narrow to spade shape kind of coming through. The other Palonensis has it as well, so that's an obvious trait. So these are your reference examples of Mira, Palonensis, non-striped, Palonensis striped, uh, Attenborougai, and Leonardo. So, if you think about growing these, Akadama with a lot of perlite, like my Leonardo has, I found that to be really good for rooting and or helping highland species acclimate uh, to not get too overwatered. If anybody has any questions or some thoughts come to mind, please post them in the comments. I haven't seen a Deanna for sale or and I haven't really thought to look for one because I tend to like Mira more than Deanna just because of that red tendril is, in my opinion, an interesting trait. And usually it's the harder one to grow, to my understanding. Yeah, to my understanding. Anywho, this will be all for the discussion video. I hope you're all having a good day, and see you all later. Trevor out.